When I teach, I use a flipped classroom. Instead of watching passively a lecture in class, students watch the video ahead of time, then the precious in-class time is spent answering questions, working on homework, working on exercises, things like that. In this video, I want to talk about why I use a flipped classroom, how it works, and what you need as a student to do to succeed in a flipped class. Because you might not have seen this before. So let me first talk about some of the reasons that sometimes come up in my course reviews about why students think I do a flipped classroom. I don't do it because I'm lazy. Believe me, I can be lazy. But this is not an example of that. It takes a long time to prepare a script, record it, edit the resulting video, have accessible subtitles, and link it from the course webpage. Then I show up during class to answer your questions. If I wanted to minimize effort, I'd just lecture from a loose collection of notes and get rid of everything else that I'm doing here. And I don't do it for the ad dollars. I get about a hundred bucks a year from YouTube. Thus far, the payment doesn't cover the money I spend on buying cookies for students and paying for things like GatherTown for our end of semester events. Now, maybe that would change if more people liked and subscribed, hint, hint. But until then, so why do I actually do a flipped classroom? In 2016, I briefly went back to teaching a quote-unquote normal class because I was teaching it for the first time and worried I couldn't put together all of the videos in time. Again, it takes a lot of work to put these together. I was lecturing as usual and there were a couple of super engaged students who sat in the front row answering all the questions and I felt like things were going great. They weren't. A huge fraction of the students didn't really know how to program in Python. A prerequisite didn't really teach them that despite claiming to. And I didn't find out that this was a problem until the day before the first homework was due. Students were struggling to write a for loop. This never would have happened in a flipped classroom where students had to work on exercises in class. The biggest part of flipping is that I put the videos up online and you watch them before class. Then we use that time that you would have otherwise spent in class to answer your questions, to work through exercises, and help you understand the content and make progress on homeworks. If this were happening in 2016, I would have figured out there was a problem a lot earlier. So that's what I do in a flipped classroom. Let's talk what you have to do in a flipped classroom. And I think the right way to talk about this is in terms of what not to do. So let's first go through some ways of doing very poorly in this class. The first is kind of obvious, but you can probably see how this can happen. You don't watch the videos one week for whatever reason, so it doesn't make sense for you to come to class if you haven't watched the video. Then that repeats over and over again until the midterm. Then you try to watch all the videos at once. That's not going to work. A slightly different version of this failure mode is not watching the videos or starting so late that you try to watch them at 5x speed five minutes before class starts. And that's not a good way to retain all of this information. Then you end up asking really obvious questions in the class that were actually answered in the reading or in the video. Finally, there's a version that feels like you're doing things right, and I can't tell that you're doing it the wrong way. You watch all the videos with maybe 20% of your attention, then you come to class again with 20% of your attention, then you get maybe like 20% of the possible points, and complain to me about how you got a bad grade despite doing everything right. So what does it actually mean to watch the lectures? You need to focus on it just like you would in any other class. Sit down with paper and pencil and write down the parts that you found confusing or want to ask about. The advantage of flipping is that you can do a better job of watching the lecture because you can pick the time, place, and manner that works best for you. 3 a.m. in bed, 8 p.m. after dinner, or on a train ride to the garden state. And this is also good for me as it gives me more flexibility in how I deliver lectures. Then when you come to class, for the flipped classroom to work for you, you need to ask the questions that you have. And when I think that a question could be answered by what was in the videos or the reading, I'll turn that question back to the rest of the class. This is a good test for you to see if you understood the material. Answer those questions. It makes the class a lot more fun. We'll also have weekly exercises where we work through examples. These are super important. So even though they won't be graded, for accuracy, it's incredibly important that you try to do them and fix any gaps in your understanding. Right before the exam, you'll ask me for practice exams. I will say no because the exercises that we have every week 
were your practice for the exam. Part of the point, at least in my mind, of a flipped classroom is to make the learning experience more social. So use that to your advantage. You'll probably work with other students on the homework. Maybe you'll want to watch the lectures together too. It's more fun if you can pause, talk over stuff, and make fun of my outfits with your friends. And if you end up not liking my lectures and end up replacing them with somebody else's lectures, like my former student Mohit Iyer's YouTube channel, I'm not going to be upset. I'm totally cool if you flip through the slides, figure out the concepts, and then learn them somewhere else. My goal is that you learn and come to class ready to discuss the subject of the day. However you get there is fine by me. And that's another advantage of the flipped classroom, in my opinion. University students are, after all, not really paying for a lecture. The marginal cost of a lecture is basically zero, particularly when it's delivered online. The reason that I'm a professor is to be able to interact with students, and I think that the flipped classroom is the best way to help that interaction happen even when classes get larger. I realize that the flipped classroom is new and different, but I think that if you make the effort to process the material, everyone, students at the University of Maryland, me, and people online who are just discovering the world of natural language processing will benefit. So thank you in advance for doing something in a way that might be new to you, and I think will make for a better experience for all of us. This is just one video from a course that I'm teaching. If you want to get the whole context, check out the course webpage linked below. There you can find all of the videos in the right order. YouTube likes to show you older videos out of order, homeworks, exercises, and recommended readings. And if you want to help other people find videos like this, please be sure to like and subscribe to provide a big gradient to the algorithm.